Good morning, class. My name is Lori Maitland, and welcome to Women's Lifestyle. Today, from Women's Lifestyle, we're going to talk about a woman as the queen of pop and rock in history of women and rock named Cindy Bullins. We're also going to talk about her second album, made from 1979, as the lost album of the 70s called Steal the Night. Speaking of her second album, Steal the Night, it was left unsuccessful when it was a promo years ago, originally released on the Casablanca record and filmworks label owned by Neil Bogart. Regrettably, I am so very shockingly surprised to know that this album was a flop and nobody had the chance to save it from disappearing. It went down the drain and never made it to the U.S. pop market. Her lost 1979 single, Too Close to Home, was never played at the discotheques, nor on dance shows like Dancing on Air, Dance Party USA, Soul Train, The Dance Show, and all that stuff. Furthermore, it never made it to the top 40. Years ago, since March 1980, with guests included Cool and the Gang, it was only promoted on American Bandstand with the late Dick Clark, where she performed her own songs, The Title Cut and Too Close to Home, that gained no popularity. Her album also includes the single Trust Me, that missed the top 40. It's too bad for Cindy because she missed out on being on the covers of the women's magazines like Red Book, Good Housekeeping, New Woman, Family Circle, and Woman's Day. It's also a pity that nobody in the whole wide world wrote up album reviews of her second album that would have been put on different women's magazines. Instead, her good album, Steal the Night, was ruined by an indecent, horrible-looking album called Freeze Frame by the English pop-rock duo Godly and Cream. I am deeply saddened about her second album, because her second album, Steal the Night, never made it to the top when it missed the Billboard Hot 100. Instead, her three singles, Steal the Night, Too Close to Home, and Trust Me, were eaten up by English men in New York done by Godly and Cream, Atomic, done by Blondie, (laughs) and Why Did You Do It, done by Marianne Faithful. (laughs) You see, it means her decent three singles taken from her second album went unnoticed and nobody had the chance to save her three songs from dying and if nobody had a chance to hear the female voice of Cindy Bullins her good music from 1979 would be ruined by strange vocoder music which it was used on some vocoderish albums 
by Herbie Hancock. <laughs> Such as Feet Don't Fail Me Now, Sunlight, Future Shock, Direct Step, Plus her good music that is made man made was ruined by the strange and horrible vocoderish music of Neil Young on his 1982 album called Trans with the song Sample and Hold. I feel terribly sorry for her earlier work that was used on her second album made from 1979 because you know why? Her real man-made music was ruined by the strange talk box machine music of Zap and Roger Troutman. You see, that's what made her real man-made music, which is used in her earlier work, disappear. And nobody had the chance to save her earlier work from dying. Furthermore, it made her second album disappear from the airwaves and nobody had the chance to save it from dying either. <laughs> and if nobody could hear the woman Miss Bullens sing in real life, her earlier work would be destroyed by the strange autotune machines that are a big issue that I can't tolerate. So, the good news is I brought it back to life after it was hidden in the vault too long and it will never vanish again. And if it's the real man-made music of the early Cindy Bullins from the late 70s, thumbs up. If it's the auto-tune, spoiled-up man-machine music, thumbs down. <laughs> Plus... I want to thank the Lord for letting me help CD Baby re-release her earlier material from her second album, Steal the Night, by purchasing a postal money order to pay for it that was never available in the digital download format. And then everybody will be happy about that. So let's start doing the album review together. Side one opens up with Full Tilt Rocker, Real to Real, Trust Me, Hurry Up Forever, and Side One closes out with the title cut, which is actually Steal the Night Away, all written by her. Side 2 opens up with Too Close to Home, written by herself along with Mark Doyle, Powerless, Rain Check on Romance, Two Track Mind, and then Side 2 closes out with Holding Me Crazy. I must have to let most of you know that her second album Steal the Night is a very excellent album so I'll give it 10 out of 10 and a hundred
percent. Here are the credits shown on the back of her second album. On lead vocals, electric and acoustic guitar, harmonica and percussion, Miss Cindy Bullens. On lead guitar, acoustic guitar, bass and percussion, Mark Doyle. On electric and acoustic piano and synthesizers, Triantham Whitley. On drums and percussion, Tom Mooney. On piano, played on the song Trust Me, Queen Miss Cindy Bullens. On synthesizer, played on the song Perilous, Mark Doyle. On bass, played on some songs Trust Me, Holding Me Crazy, Rain Check on Romance, Powerless, and Steal the Night, Roger Freeland. And last but not least, on background vocals, they were nicely sung by three friends, herself, Mark Doyle, and John Joyce. If you like her second album made from 1979, purchase at store.cdbaby.com slash cd slash Cindy Bullens 13. Right now, let's play three singles off from her second album made from 1979, such as Too Close to Home, Steal the Night, and Trust Me. Thanks for watching, and I hope we'll see you again sometime. Have a Merry Christmas. I'm Sandy Ryder, Eddie's wife. You startled me. I've been waiting to talk to you, Miss Hemmings. About what? These lies about Eddie. I don't know why your girl would say such things. Dana doesn't tell lies. Well, sure you're going to say that, because she's your daughter. But Eddie says she's lying, and you got to get her to stop. I'm sorry, I don't have to listen to this. Now look, Eddie and I, we are just getting back together when all this started. Let go of and, my look, car. it wasn't Eddie's don't fault. You don't drop the charges. Let go! You better drop your charges! She wasn't hurt none! She wasn't hurt! He didn't hurt her! Please listen to me! Your kid's a liar! with the other worker, he started giving me a hard time. It didn't take well to any kind of authority. How long was he here? Four or five months. Firing him was my pleasure. What about friends? Closest thing he had was a guy he beat up. Charlie Garnsey. Go ahead, talk to him. I got kids too. Two girls. Get over here.
I don't want one thing to happen to that little girl. Do you understand? Oh, whatever happens, happens. Don't you get ways, Eddie. You take your hands off. If anything happens to that little girl, anything, you will answer to me in a very big way. You got that? Don't you your hands off me. You know that case. I'm gonna walk out, and I'm gonna walk away. Yeah, Mom. What do you 
think about going to see your dad for a while in San Francisco? Mom, I thought we settled that. Well, we did, but... I may have to go away for a while. Where? I don't know yet, but I thought we'd discuss it. Let's give it a little thought. Well, I don't have to think about it. I want to stay here with you. But if I asked you to, you'd go. For me, right? Just for a little while. Mom, does this have anything to do with Chrissy Ryder's father shooting himself? Dana, that doesn't have anything to do with us. It's just... Even if he did the thing he did, I feel... I guess I feel it was somehow my fault. Dana, you shouldn't feel that way. But I do. Baby. I do. You aren't responsible for what happened. Do you understand? You are not responsible, Dana. Oh, maybe she had it once. Lost him or her. She's probably had a rotten childhood. Doesn't, doesn't it always start there? Well, who hasn't? I'm sick and tired of making excuses for Raven. I don't know. I wonder whether I've been handling this whole thing wrong. What do you mean? Well, I wonder if I if I wouldn't have been more of a help to Logan if I had changed my attitude towards Raven. You know, been more understanding, more patient. Let her be my friend. I don't think it would have done any good. Well, you know something? I'm going to make the attempt. April, it's a waste of time. The trial is too close, and Logan's position is, is too bad. Something has to be done. I'm going to try to see her. Try to talk to her like a person. Well, I'm sure Logan would appreciate that, but I think it's a lost cause. Well, I've got to try. Try for Logan's sake. Heaven knows he's helped me so much. Yeah, he has. Mrs. Scott, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. I just wanted to, to say that I'm so sorry I was late. Oh, uh, no, uh, that's, that's all right. How is Emily? Well, she's just the same. Oh. I'll just leave you two alone. to lose by a postponement. You have everything to gain if I decide not to fight for custody. You know, there are times when I wish I could read your mind. Right now, for instance, I'd sure like to know what's behind this little ploy. It is not a ploy. It is a perfectly legitimate request. I told you I've changed my mind, and I... I don't think I can handle Jamie anymore. I think it would be better off with his father. What's the matter? Don't you want him anymore? Of course I do. I thought you wanted him, too. You've been behaving to everybody as if he was the most important thing in your life, though God knows why. Well, now that the trial is just a few days away, I, uh, I have a few doubts. Doubts? Raven, one thing you've never had is doubts. You always know what you want. I wish that were true. Come on, what's up your sleeve, huh? You can tell me. What's behind all this? I need some more time. Time to do what and to whom? You drink this? Thank you. 
kita tunggu aja. Your lawyer know about this little request for a postponement? No, my lawyer does not know. I came to you first. What's the matter? Why can't you trust me just a little bit? Because every time I trust you a little bit, it turns out to be a big mistake. Don't tell me you're in the mood for this custody trial because I won't believe it now that Draper has come back. Let's just stick to the subject of Jamie and the custody suit, shall we? Tell me something, Logan. Don't you think you would be a lot better off if you just went to went to Draper and were honest with him about what happened between you and April? I mean, he might be upset at first, but eventually he would understand that she was a widow and she didn't know he was going to come back. I'll talk to you later about this postponement. I think I'd better give it a little thought. Alone. Princess have a nightmare. I keep seeing Orpheus. You're so worried about that bone. Yes, I am. I have never been so scared in my entire life. He is a maniac and he's after us. He's after you. Oh, baby, you don't have anything to worry about. Now, didn't I prove to you that I can take care of myself? 
And you. I'll never forget what you did for me last night. I was in the mood for a swim anyway. But I also can't forget what we took from that boat. Those tattoos mean trouble. Four people have been killed because of them. I've seen how Orpheus works. He would think nothing of killing us two. I know where this is leading. Well, you said you wanted to sleep on it. You promised that you would think about giving Roman those And I kept my promise. I thought about and? it. And? I can't do it. Why not? Because the ISA cannot handle Orpheus. Well, please just trust Roman. I trusted Roman. What did it get us? You got kidnapped, didn't you? I'm going to handle those tattoos and Orpheus my own way. Steve, listen to me. You could die because of those tattoos. And Marlena could, too. You just have to trust Roman. Just give him the photos. <laughs>